So today we'll be showing you step by step how to complete a Facebook ad campaign for Spotify Music, how I set up a landing page using Tone Den, and I'll be talking about things like targeting and geographies and locations and um, all the good stuff that I think you really need to know to create a successful marketing campaign. I have another video which will be up here, uh, which discusses how to make the ad. Now the ad itself is extremely important. Definitely watch that video if you get a chance because getting the ad right is about 70% of your success. If the ad catches the eye, you're pretty much almost there. Without further ado, let's go into Facebook and start the whole process. Um, this is a step-by-step -step process. Watch it until the end because I think if you miss any part of it, actually it might not work for you. Let's do it. Now, before you go into Facebook, what you need to do is to create a landing page. We want people to hit the landing page and click on your link. We don't really want to go straight into Spotify. And the reason for that, they might go in there and not like the song <laughs> or they may not listen to the whole song. So if they've clicked on your landing page and then they click again onto Spotify, the chances are they really like your song. And that means they're going to play the song uh, until the end or play most of the song, like your song, save the song, put it on playlists. So it's a really good thing for the Spotify algorithm. Now I use toneden.io to create a free landing page. And this is what my landing page for the song is. The song's called What You Wanna Be and I'm the Artist. It looks like this. You select the services that you want to promote. Now I always put Spotify at the top and lately I've been putting Apple Music in. So Apple doesn't have the reach, but you still can get some money from Apple. It depends on what you want to do, but Spotify has got to be on the top. Apple is is uh, optional. <laughs> I had Deezer on, but there's just no audience for Deezer. What I do recommend is you click iTunes and you click Beatport. Now, if, you, if you're on Beatport, that is because not everyone is on Beatport. It depends on the sort of music you make. Now, the reason for that is iTunes pays a lot. Because, you're the, because your fans are actually downloading and paying for your download. And that's the same thing for Beatport. So you really do want people, if they've got those services, to buy your song because you're going to make a lot more money. You know, with Spotify, you might make less than a, a tenth of a cent <laughs> per stream. We do want the exposure from Spotify, but we want the opportunities to make money. Once you put the Spotify link in there, it just gives you the graphic of the landing page. You want to just leave all that. In terms of a custom preview, you don't want any preview. You want to remove any preview from the landing page because you don't want them really to play the song on the landing page. You just want them to click on the landing page. And the preview here shows you uh, what you're going to see. And you can see straight away there's iTunes and Beatport. You can pre-order from there. And then you've got Spotify and Apple. The next page, edit metadata, that just leave that uh, and press continue. Um, same thing for modify URL. You want to give the link path a name that you could recognize. And you do have to have your own custom domain. I'm not going to go into that. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about custom domains. But you do need a custom domain because it's a Facebook policy. Now on the tracking settings, I have my Facebook pixel. Now if you don't have a Facebook pixel, I highly recommend that you have one and you actually need them for conversion campaigns. So this video is not going to tell you how to create a Facebook pixel. It's not too difficult to go in and create one in Facebook. Then once you've finished with all of that, you press OK, update link, everything looks good. And you'll just see the um, you'll see the link there, and you really want to have access to that link so you can use that on your Facebook campaign. Now, to get into the right area, you want to type in business.facebook.com. Now, in Facebook, once you're in there and you're all signed up, you want to go into Ads Manager and you want to click this green Create button. Once you've done that, click on Conversions. You don't want a traffic campaign where bots are clicking, where you're paying a bot to click on your uh, link. You want a conversion campaign. That, so that means you're literally tracking how often people are actually clicking on Spotify. You press continue, you give it a name. So you just give it the name of the song. So I'll just call it song for now. And then you just scroll down to the bottom. And at the bottom, there's this thing called campaign budget optimization. If you have multiple ad sets, which we'll go through in a sec, but if you have multiple ad sets, the campaign budget optimization will automatically distribute how much of your budget goes into each ad set. So if you switch it on, it will distribute the money across your ad set campaigns. I usually have that off because I want to control how much money goes into each ad set. 
So the next thing you want to do is go into here and I'm just going to use the default name, new conversions ad set. This is where the pixel piece is really important. So you need to set up a pixel. And once you select the pixel, you want the conversion event. And what the conversion event is, the thing that you want your customer or the person that you're sending the ad to, to do. Now, what we all want them to do is view content. View content is an event that signals that someone has clicked on the Spotify ad. So this is where you set your budget. You want to set it pretty high on the first day. And it could that could be 20 pounds for you, or that could be 50 pounds. I tend to put 50 pounds on the first day. And the reason for that is because it just gets you to the 50 conversions much faster, which is an important concept because once you get to 50 conversions, the Facebook algorithm has kind of worked out who you're targeting and it starts getting cheaper at that point. So the slower you get to 50 conversions, the um, the longer period of time it takes for the pixel to warm up and to get the right information that it needs. So we set a start date and this is another really important thing. Always select an end date. You don't know after setting this campaign, you don't know if you're going to walk out that door and have a heart attack or get hit by a bus. And the last thing you want to do is keep paying 50 pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it is forever. <laughs> so I uh, highly recommend that you set a, a close date so you know it's going to close. So I'm just going to set it to actually in two days time from now. And then the rest of it is about targeting. We want to start looking at who we're going to target. Now, I've actually got two different types of campaigns. Uh, I've got a campaign where I'm targeting Spotify listeners, which is I think what most people will have and I'm going to demonstrate now. But I've also got different campaigns for targeting Beatport users. So DJs and that sort of thing. So if you're targeting Spotify users, you want to put in detail targeting Spotify. You can see here on the right hand side, the size and reach is over 300 million people. That's a lot of people. So if you're targeting Beatport, you just remove Spotify and type Beatport in there. Then what you want to do is not add demographics, but you want to narrow the audience, okay? You want to say people must have Spotify and then out of all those people that have Spotify, I want an audience that likes electronic dance music. Maybe I want people to who like Bruno Mars because Bruno, my song sounds a bit like Bruno Mars or another artist that my song sounds like. It's really important that you work out who your song sounds like, but we're just going to leave it to these two interests for now. The other thing that we we must have is a location. So the default is going to be US. You can change it to whoever you want, but there are two tiers of countries as far as I'm concerned. There's the richer countries like US, UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. And in those countries, the cost per conversion is generally going to be higher. So this is something to think about. So what you can do is duplicate the ad set so all of the information that's on here is just US, UK, Germany, etc. And you duplicate it and just change the locations. So you've got the second tier, which are the, the maybe the less rich countries like Brazil, Mexico, Turkey, Poland, etc., Russia, where the cost per conversion is always going to be much, much lower. So you're going to get much more conversions and much more streams with these countries. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go in and edit the locations. And what you can do is you can click on browse and select regions like euro area or whatever, uh, or saved locations. Now I've saved my own location. It's literally just using a text file and uploading it, copying and pasting the text into there. So I've got rich countries, lots of countries and a good Spotify countries. I'm just going to use lots of countries. So it automatically populates all of the countries that I need and that's done. Now in terms of age, I know that my core listener set finishes at about 50 and actually starts a bit older at about 21. And that's it. If you want, you can save your audience, but I'm not going to do that because you really want to just check your audience all the time. Now under placements, you want to do manual placements, automatic placements, if you really don't have a lot of time or you're not sure what you're doing, maybe just choose that. But I think for Spotify, you really want manual placements because what you want to do is unclick all of this stuff here and just click Instagram and you only want an Instagram story. Actually, let's unclick all of the feeds. So we just want Instagram stories. Definitely get rid of reels because you're going to get a lot of engagement with reels, but no one listens to your music. Um, so stories is the way to go and just make sure nothing else is clicked and that's it. So then you go next. 
You want to select the right Instagram account. I've got several different ones, uh, but I'm going to use this one. So for example, if you've got another Instagram account that is linked to another artist, you want to just use that here. You want to promote a different artist. And this is where you add your ad creative. So I'm just going to click on add menu, add video. Now I've got previous videos, um, but you can upload them. So I'm just going to use one that I've already created for the campaign and you just click done and you don't populate anything in primary text and headline you can if you want but uh, all of the text that i've needed has been created on the ad and as i said before um, please review my previous video that i did on how to create an ad creative what you do want is a call to action that says listen now gotta have that now on the website we'll go back to tone den and create the link that we we made before which is here put that in there you do want to preview the URL. Let's just have a quick look, just make sure it works and it does, which is good. And that's it. The rest of it should default and then just click on publish. And that's it. You're done. Now, as I said before, you can easily click on the ad set level, right click, sorry, click on the buttons and duplicate that. And one thing that I do very commonly is I duplicate the ad. So we just, you can make say three copies of the ad. So if you've got different copies of the ad, you can duplicate them here you call them copy two copy three copy four so it just duplicates all the details that were in the uh, previous ads so they're basically duplicates but you want to then go in and change the ad creative for each one and that just literally means going into one of them and selecting change video and then you select a different video you select a different video and click publish so you have all these different ad creatives for one ad set the other thing you can do is you can duplicate the ad set and the reason you would do that is because you may want to, as I said before, change something about your audience. Click publish. So it, it not just duplicates the ad set, it duplicates all the ads that you had underneath it. And then you go into the ad set and tweak whatever you need to tweak. So you want to remove United States, you do that. You want to remove Bruno Mars, you can do that. For each ad set, and this, this is something to be really careful about when you're doing a duplicate, uh, you want to make sure that your budget is under control. Now, because I've duplicated the ad set, my actual budget for the campaign is is a hundred pounds a day. Not 50, a hundred. That's because it's duplicated. So that might be fine because what you can do is you can actually stop the ads once you've reached, um, you can manually stop the ads once you've reached a certain target. And what I mean by that is you can actually compare the two on the first day of the release and the one that you think is performing better with the lowest cost per conversion, maybe you just stop the other ad set and just keep the better performing one. And that's actually a pretty good tactic and something I've tried before, which does work. I've had five, six, seven different ad sets and one of them really performed. The rest of them didn't perform as well. And I just uh, kept the one that performed. So it's just a good way to manage it. And if you, for example, don't want the ad set anymore, then you could just literally select here on the top, turn off ad set. So it's still there, but it's just off and it's not active. You click on this ad set, you can see that it's active. So what happens next? You just click on the close button and it should it should pretty much com, come near the top of your list. And there it is. And it's called Song. The campaign's called Song. What will happen is it will be in review and you don't know how long it's going to be in review for. It could be in review for... 30 minutes or it could be in review for five hours. So what I really recommend is um, anyone who sets one of these campaigns up to do it well in advance of the release, literally even a week before release, because what could happen and the worst thing that can happen is that the ad gets rejected for some reason. It might be deemed to be inappropriate. They might, they might think there's some nudity in there, even if there isn't. So you want to make sure that that's done well in advance so it is approved and then on the day of release, you could just uh, activate it and that's it. So that is it. That's pretty much what you need to do to create a Facebook ad. Now, if you've got any questions about this, I'm very happy to help with answering those. Just put them in the comments and I'll put all the links, related links into the description. So hopefully that can help you as well. So thanks. See you later.